Marcus Hart and Dominic Steele and thanks for joining us and we are back today on the topic of a united evangelistic campaign. Our guests Tom Melbourne, Elliot Temple and Jody McNeil. Uh, we have raised this a couple of times now on the Pastor's Heart and the advantages of us all working together in evangelism, doing something under one banner and that the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Uh, most impressive is the Passion for Life UK material. And today we are thinking about how we might run that in our context with three reviewers. Um, Tom Melbourne is here. Tom is the senior pastor of Central Villages Anglican Church in the Blue Mountains. Jody McNeil joins us from Jamboree. And Elliot Temple is the missions pastor at Christ Church St Ives in Sydney's north. Uh, Tom, mm. we start with you. What's the, you've been reviewing Passion for Life. What's yeah, your take? Yeah. What, what's it, what is it really? Well, it seems to me that a, a Passion for Life is, is being spearheaded by our much loved brother Rico Tice over in the UK. Uh, and um, they have been for a number of years trying to uh, rev up evangelism in the UK church um, by producing material, resources, training. Uh, and it, in the lead up to Easter next year, they're running, I guess, a big campaign to try and get churches to come together around a common theme, um, a common push. Uh, the, the line is find life that lasts. It's closer than you think which is a very compelling line. They're putting out stacks of resources. Uh, they're calling churches all across the UK and Ireland to buy in, and they've been generous enough to start sort of lending in our direction some of their resources, which is what I've been looking through, thinking about my church and what's going to happen next year. So mm. very interesting. Yeah. Elliot, you've been looking over the resources. What was, I mean, your mission pastor, you think about this all the time. <laughs> yeah, we've all had a pretty good look into it. And the first thing that stands out is just how well organised it is. You can see that there's years and years of preparation that it takes us back, that the training content started from the beginning of last year in the calendar and it's ramping up towards Easter next year. So there's just a whole lot of good elements coming together. Mm. Drill down into the structure of that training conference, uh, the content for us. Yeah. yeah, so if I'm right, there were 21 yep. uh, modules uh, that really take you into the practical side of evangelism, as well as the theological elements, the gospel focus, and how to go about witnessing. Uh, there's video content followed by some discussion questions, and these modules are given or gifted to churches so that you could use and operate the training material. Mm -hmm. And what's really flexible about it is you can even preview the videos right now without having registered for anything. Mm -hmm. Jody. You reviewed them last week ahead of your staff planning meeting for 2022 this week. Yeah. Where did you come away from after having that examination? Uh, well, I was overwhelmed, I think, with the quality and uh, I think I was overwhelmed with the, the vision. I, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the whole idea, as you say before, of, of doing something with so many others and having that, that, that like you know, the name suggests, a, a passion to, to be doing evangelism, I, I think it was... Uh, was exciting. I, I think as I saw it, I, I was a little bit overwhelmed and it felt a bit like coming to a party a bit late because uh, these guys have been partying for about a year yeah. or so, you know, <laughs> and we sort of turn up and it's November and it's like, whoa, this thing's already happening. Uh, 21 individual training sessions leading up to next Easter and I'm thinking, ah, how are we going to get on board with this? But as I started to drill down with some of them, I, I realised that the, the training material has actually been arranged in a couple of different blocks. And, uh, and there's at least one block I thought, you know, straight away, this is the sort of thing that I think would be, be very useful. And it's customizable yeah. for your context I, I, in I Jamboree. Think so. yeah. I think so. I think so. I mean, it's a long way from London to Jamboree. Uh, this yeah. is true. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you still think it could work? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot that I like about it. I, I, I do like the, the, the kind of the, the, um, the marketing collateral with the, the, the simple name Life. Uh, mm -hmm. that I think we'll have a photo well, of. Let, a I'm while, still on the training material, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, yeah. stay away from, we'll, we'll talk about the actual yeah. campaign in a minute, yeah, but stay on yeah. the training material. Yeah. Um, talk to me about, you, you were saying there's some aspects of the training material, a block that you could think, I could just take that and run that in Jamboree. Tell us about that. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I started to look at some of the sessions, uh, the video sessions, and uh, the one that I landed on first was actually one that uh, Rico was doing, and, and he had, uh, it was a four point sermon, Four things. Second point, Gehenna. And I thought, I've heard him speak about hell before, actually. And, and just the, the whole way in which he was pushing us to think about the realities of life and death and judgment. Uh, it, there was a freshness to that mm -hmm. that I, th I thought that is what 
my brothers and sisters in Jamboree and I, as their pastor, mm -hmm. need to need to be reminded mm -hmm. about afresh that that there really is this. There, there's a need for us at this time of of feeling like we're back on top of things uh, to actually stop and think that there's more to life. Mm. Mm. Elliot, yeah. So, being a mission pastor, we are commissioned to train people in evangelism, and you spend years trying to write the content that you think is going to actually really work. And I don't know many people who have the freedom and time like I do in the Mission Pastor role to really create that content. Mm. And just to think that there's 21 modules already pre-prepared with a lot of strength, um, I think it'll save people a lot of time and energy, but it really does take a bit of thought as to how you'll implement that content, how you'll use that content to be most effective. There's a mistake that we can make that we throw a whole lot of training content at people and then we do it all in one rush, maybe in the lead up to Easter. Mm. And then for the next couple of years, we've used our content. What do we do next? Mm. So how do we use that content is an important question. Mm. I mean, your comment is quite similar to the comment that uh, Jessica Brower, mission pastor here, made to me. She said, um, there's a lot of stuff there that's the kind of stuff I've been wanting to write and looking for the time to write. Mm. And here's somebody already written it and saying pretty much what I wanted to say. And is that how you feel? Yeah, I'd agree. So the practical side of the conversational dynamic and the practical side of building relationships, because it's not exegetically or theologically arrived at, you don't come out of scripture and therefore have all these principles for being an evangelist in the modern context. Uh, sometimes our evangelism training is uh, limited to the theological and to the you know, biblical. But what they've done is a great balance and blend. So there's a whole module on biblical principles, the sovereignty of God, uh, you know, opening the word with people. But there's also the practical reflection, which I think people are yearning for. And they've embedded that. When we run uh, training at Christchurch St Ives, We've done a repeating training that we run term, term, every term of the year, basically. We just invite new cohorts into yeah. it. And what we find is as we embed a few of these principles, people start to live it out. And what they've arranged in their training content are the kinds of layers that we've tried to embed in our content as well. So mm -hmm. it's kind of very aligned. Mm. You, you said to me before, Something like there's almost five years of content there. What, what did you mean by that? Yeah, this is, if you, if you get people for four weeks of training, the risk is that they'll be enthused for four weeks, maybe eight, and then leave it behind. So there's enough content in the different modules mm. to be able to draw out the conversation for many years to come. Mm -hmm. uh, how you use it in your first year and who you use it with. So rather than necessarily saying, let's train the whole church all in one hit, in the same way, you can think, what are the key things for the wider church? What do I want to go in deeper with, with a few, you know, convicted or committed keen members? And then how do I build that over the years so that we're reinforcing it rather than just dropping it and running? Mm. I'm going to come back to you in a minute about the wider church and the few. But um, I was talking to David Jensen, evangelist, uh, and uh, he said the big issue is improving the mission culture in our church. And um, uh, Tom, how can you see that this might help raise the overall, I mean, because I'm imagining as you were reviewing the material, you're thinking, how can this impact my exactly. mission culture? And yeah. Elliot's comments are really helpful because my, my mind initially went to, great, I want to get this into my Bible study groups across the board at church next year. But you're right, that just dumping it and leaving it with these small groups is probably not going to be very helpful. I'm, I'm thinking uh, more in terms now of uh, having a little small core team who are going to be passionate about this for years to come and starting with them. Um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I've been wanting to do for the past few years, but I, I'm flat out. When do I get the time to do this kind of specialized training? Uh, here it is handed to me on a platter and, and to build it into a small team's mindset, I think could be a really powerful thing mm -hmm. um, for them to watch a couple of those videos on connecting a couple of the videos on the sort of theological basis for why we think this matters. And then for that team together with me to plan Easter. I think that could just be a really powerful moment in the life of the church and a big step forward for our church in going, this is not just a kind of run from the top kind of thing, but it's coming from amongst us. Um, and yeah. I mean, one of the things I really liked, and I imagine this is you, Elliot, as well, that they've given us all the scripts. And so you can take out the, I mean, take out the bits that don't fit Jamboree, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, 
and replace them with you or somebody else and use the bits that that do work yeah. for you and, and made it incredibly flexible and generous. Uh, the, yeah. the entire text of each of the video sessions is there and they say, use it as you'd like. It's very generous. Mm. Elliot, um, uh, I mean, you've got to take it to your staff meeting, but just imagine we are your staff meeting. <laughs> and, uh, um, what, what's the kind of pitch you're, going to, you're thinking of putting in the start, staff meeting in a couple of weeks' time? Well, there's nobody else listening. It's just right. us. No, no, it's, it's <laughs> just... I, I might just take some notes. But <laughs> we're in a unique position at Christchurch where we've got, you know, 700 or so adults on Sunday. We've got a staff team of 20 people. And then we've got uh, lay members who get involved in the mission. So the way that we operate is not that I walk into the staff and we make a pitch and then run it. What we're at to at the moment is we're scheduling our calendar for next year. We've already identified term one. We've got... Uh, basically some questions we're asking of the community. We haven't defined the topic, the theme yet, so this fits into that conversation. Term two, we've got some pre-evangelistic activity. Term three, we've got some Sundays we're inviting people to church. And term four, we've got a course. So we're bringing people mm. on a journey through the whole year. Easter and Christmas are big moments in our church. That's when this is uh, focused. But in our church, people are drawn to Easter and Christmas as traditions. And there's not a thematic need to have a topic that really draws people in. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how does this thematic content help us to engage the community throughout the year? And then in particular, I'd say we've already built the coaching structures and we operate that term by term. And there's a network of already 60 people that we mm -hmm. can give content to and make work. So to some extent, we don't need to make a pitch to the team because the team's already on board with mission for next year. It's just how does this fit with the right people making the choices about the marketing and the right choices about, you know, uh, where does this fit in the training? Mm. I've just realised I've kind of conflated two questions. One is the, the question of how might the, the training material work out, but the other is the actual the month-long campaign that they're proposing. Why don't we <coughs> wind back and introduce the month-long campaign? So let's start with you, Jody. What did you make of the various images that we're watching here? I, I, I thought it was fresh and edgy. Uh, it wasn't cringy, all those sorts of things mm -hmm. that we're wanting to do. There was, there's a versatility to it as well, and uh, the, the whole idea of the... The, the light box of life mm. um, and what you could do with that. I, I thought, I, I, like what, I like where that's going. Mm. Mm. Elliot? Yeah, so it's very positive. At the same time, it's reflective. Mm -hmm. So individuals sitting in places on their own uh, in almost dark moments, mm. reflecting on life. Yep. So it's drawing out the theme for pers a person who's questioning in the aloneness, which coming out of the COVID experience. I think yeah. there's a lot of questioning. Mm. So I think it's fitting to the moment. Yeah. Tom? Uh, imagery wise, I think it, it, it will work great. The thing that really gets me is, is the tagline, mm. that, that fine life that lasts. It invites us into, a, I guess, a, a bit of a, an exploration, a bit of a journey of, um, firstly, why would I consider that life would last forever? You know, mm. are there reasons why life doesn't end? For so many people, we, we take it for granted that you know, the eternal life is something that's on the table. Uh, but uh, the average person I meet down the road in Lawson has written it off a long time ago. So to have it put in front of them that life that lasts is out there, I think that's a really compelling line. Um, you know, it doesn't include the word Jesus, but it, it's starting to invite those sort of questions. So um, I, for one, I think I'm looking forward to using it at Easter time. Um, it's interesting just hearing you three reflect on that well, both the find life that lasts, it's closer than you think. Mm. And I'm just doing in my head a little compare and contrast with find a life that lasts, it's a little closer than you think, and the Jesus all about life and pointing to John 10.10. 10. Yep. And it's quite a different um, uh, direction. I mean, I wonder if it's the same word, but it's quite a different push. Do you want to just elaborate on that? Yeah. Well, cer certainly a lot of the promotional stuff that was to pastors and mission directors and so on on the website, it, it contrasted life very much to death. 
Yeah. Then, mm -hmm. And there was a lot of talk about the, the statistics, the, the, the playing back the, the old video rolls of uh, a lot of footage from COVID and so on like that. It was t trying to tie in with mass death, mm -hmm. so life as opposed to death. Um, the, um, I guess the contrast could be life as opposed to life that's not as good. Mm -hmm. and, they, and that's a difference. Mm -hmm. Elliot? Although the pictures of people living bring you into your own story. <clears throat> So yep. you're sitting as a person on a train or a reflective person, mm. living life, thinking about mm. eternal life. I, I'd, I'd use the phrase eternal life now because given it's in John and because it's life that lasts, I take it that it's a more accessible phrase than eternal life to the community. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of positives. Mm -hmm. Tom? Uh, I, I was a rather young, rather young Christian when Jesus All About Life happened last time. And I couldn't quite figure it out for myself last time. Uh, what does it mean, Jesus is all about life? Um, it requires a fair bit of unpacking. Mm. Um, I remember at the time writing a, a little thing about um, picking up on <laughs> President Bartlett uh, in the West Wing and the next 10 words. And mm. what's the next 10 words after Jesus is all about life? That's right. Um, How do you get to the gospel from yeah. that point? Whereas I actually found here, find life that lasts, it's closer than you think. Yeah. It gives me a pointer of the direction that I can take the conversation and I, I think I can lead into that in a, mm. in a more, more direct way. Yeah. You're, you're looking uh, well, thoughtful I, there. <laughs> I just see both are about life. Mm. Both are trying to get us to Jesus. Uh, the main thing is I want congregation members that can make it go in the direction that they need to go and I want to train yeah. people for conversation. Yeah. So I'd say both are usable. Um, but uh, there's obviously strengths and weaknesses of any campaign and you can critique and, and analyse. And I think that certainly the one coming out of the UK Passion for Life, it just has so many well thought through elements that make it positive in marketing, it makes it positive in conversation. And there's the whole underpinning of the mindset of training you for the way that you live as a Christian, which I think is so much, it, it's more significant than the theme. We've got to get the theme right. Uh, but we can we can debate themes so much, yeah. and yeah. and we've used different themes each year. Some of them have gone well, some of them not as well. Mm. And uh, I think both are positive. Both are about life. We could make something of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I, I raised Jesus all about life because we'd lined up this discussion for today, and three days ago, an email arrived in our inboxes saying. There's a Jesus All About Life campaign at Easter time next year as well. Tom, your take on that? Uh, well, it's come a little bit out of left field, you know, in a way. Um, you know, the original Jesus All About Life was 2008 or 2009, something like that. Um, and uh, for most of us, I guess our planning for next year is well underway. Um, bit, of a, bit of a teaser on their website of we're going to run it again. But I look at what the UK guys are putting out and I think there's a wealth of content that I'm ready to start Plan, forming my plans around. Um, the, the teaser will need to be fleshed out a whole lot more before I can really sink my teeth into it and go, yeah, this is what something I can run with. Um, I'm open. Um, you know, the more info, the better. But yeah. yeah. Jen? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was a, a pleasant coincidence that the, you know, two <laughs> campaigns, both with the word life in it. And, uh, and, I, and I, I guess I, I was pleased when I saw the Bible Society one because I thought uh, if they're going to do a whole lot of work with a mass campaign and I can just sort of, you know, put my sail up and be blowing along, <laughs> that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, especially if they've sort of got the light box here which says life and then you've got Jesus all about life here. I think, oh, they'll work together well. But, but certainly it's the, it's the depth of the uh, the material and the thinking that's gone behind a passion for life that that and, and it's the training thing the, the yep. first tab you get is about training it's not about the event which is really interesting because you'd, you'd be, be so easy mm. sort of moving towards what are the events what are the things what are the the, the drivers and, that and i assume that's in? learnt from a long period of trying this yeah it's yep. about training the locals to get it and run with it and um the, the catchiest campaign in the world is not going to work unless your people are ready <laughs> Absolutely, that's right. That's right. Um, Elliot, come and see or go and tell next year? Well, uh, you can. we're going through a shift as a church because we've been talking about come and see for the last few years in a way that's kind of been a higher emphasis, especially through COVID. We um, cancelled some of our activity 
and we focused on bringing people to come and see the church service online. Mm. There was a bit of confusion around the fact that it was an online worship experience crossed with evangelism, plus it's, you know, how do you put it all together in a way that makes sense for the worshipper and for the guest? Yeah. Um, come and see is an important part of our evangelistic activity because, you know, you are the light of the world, the Christian community, plural, together we become a light and we mm. worship God among the nations, people come and see. Uh, however, um, I, I love, there's, there's, I saw in one of the training elements on the internet for this Passion for Life um, group that uh, the way that you speak to your friends in everyday life has to bridge the gaps. It has to actually prepare people because it's such a step to walk in and change your routines and set mm. foot in church on Sunday after you've got your way of operating, you've got your way of life. Uh, so we've got to go and tell, that's obvious. So for me, the hardest part is getting people moving, which is why the training content is a key part of that. And we take those that are the most keen and give them the deepest grounding so that they can be storytellers about that. Mm. At the same time, we're talking to the whole church at a, at a we've got a, a, a long, communication plan when we're talking to to the whole church all the time about mission um, but uh, it's the gap between what you expect from people and the reality you get from people so you might say everyone's going to get on board they're all going to understand it we go backwards from what we call ad card and if you've ever heard of that phrase ad cards it's about change management there's you've got to help people have awareness then desire to get on board the knowledge to act um, and then the ability to do it, and then the reinforcement to keep doing it. So that's mm. the ADCAR thing that mm. we use. And we just do it year on year, ADCAR every year, and we go from 2% engagement to 3% engagement <laughs> to 4% engagement. Uh, wouldn't it be great if the majority of people were engaged, but it's just always a work in progress. Mm. Mm. So, Elliot, um, I mean, you're in a big church at Christchurch St Ives. Just um, do the transformation for us. What, you, what would you do if you are in a small church? Well, I'm all ears. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's just getting organised for next year around Easter. You you wouldn't have chosen a theme yet, I doubt. No. Now, this is a great theme off the shelf, ready to go. Uh, so I would start by building that into my preaching calendar. Then when it comes to the uh, training content in term one, what I'd do is I'd probably take, for example, one night in the middle of the term, gather together... Uh, the growth groups may be one way of doing it, but pick a night, try and get everyone together for one training event. Uh, at that, pick a key module, which you think could really help the whole church. And then I would be looking for a group of say 12 people to gather together over a few weeks to go through multiple modules and really try and embed it and use you know, their wisdom and ask them, how could we continue to embed this throughout the rest of the year and reinforce it? See what stories come out of that and then the regular Sundays over the year, I'd be trying to get people on stage storytelling mm. to celebrate things that are progressing. Just raise the temperature of mission through all of the aspects. Now you could also add to that some extra events midweek or other times, but I think it uh, depends on how ambitious you want to be and what your resource is at the moment. So that'd be a good start. Mm. Any questions you want to put to him, Jody, Tom? <laughs> Oh, I, know. I think that's I think that's really helpful. I think the idea of of uh, of not assuming that every single person in the congregation is going to be on board yep. with with weekly you know uh, sessions of training, um, that idea of, of of developing the core and then that will then God willing pervade uh, others. I think that's wise. Um, so Jody, staff meeting, staff planning for two thousand and twenty two. Yeah. Um, you've heard from Elliot. Um, what are you going to be arguing this week? Yeah. Well, I, I think that the big thing is we've really got to do something just before Easter next year. I mean, that's almost too late. But uh, any idea of putting it off for you know the year after and planning for that and planning for that? No, the, the iron is hot. It's right now. And mm -hmm. so we've got to do something, and we've got to do something significant in the life of our church, uh, you know, in that month before Easter. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do we do? I, I, like literally, I, I've been, been looking at the spreadsheet, planning things, thinking missions around there. What are we going to do? And then this is arrived. It's like, well, how is it going to fit in? How are we going to work it in? And so I'm going to work with the, the team to say, uh, this is how the overall plan works. Mm -hmm. It's about training. It's about awareness. It's about um, 
uh, you know, how are we going to do this? How are we going to implement it in our, our growth groups? How are we going to uh, do it in terms of some centralised training that is, that is sort of a, a newer thing for our church? How, how do we get those things going? And, and put it on the table and say, well, what are we going to do about it? Mm-hmm. But you're going to do something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I just think we, it, it, we've been, I mean, it's funny, I've been reflecting, we've been waiting for the time when we could finally have people into the building yeah. and then finally have singing, which, you know, in New South Wales, we, we sang on the weekend and how good was it? Yeah. And now it's like, okay, we can sing now. And then the next deadline is we can maybe take our masks off. Ah, right, we're back. But if we just sit there and that's the only thing that we're looking forward to, then we've, we've, the, we've missed an opportunity. So I, I, want us, I want us as a staff team to be thinking, how are we going to go hard for reaching the people of Jamboree and beyond at that time mm-hmm. as we lead up to Easter? Mm. Tom, did you think, I mean, if, if we just go to the Easter month now, mm. did, did anything come to mind if you think specific things we could do in that month that work with this theme or anything? Have you, have you got that far? I've started to ponder. Um, because I think one of the big emphases in the training is uh, you've built a team, they are keen, they're ready to do some inviting, uh, they're ready to do some telling. Um, and I think we want to offer a, a range of things that will help them to do that. I'm thinking through uh, the kind of Sundays that we'll run. Uh, you know, I'm thinking we're going to be preaching John's gospel over the next few years, but maybe taking a few key bits of uh, Jesus and the way he brings life in the face of death throughout John's gospel, bringing them to the fore across that month. Um, but also I'm thinking uh, the telling of people's stories, you know, testimony events. Uh, I think that would be a powerful thing in our part of the world. Um, people love to get together. They love to, it, it's quite a close-knit community. People will know one another. Um, and so I, I, I'm starting to lean in that direction. But at the same time, I'm wanting to have that conversation with this team. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to come with a plan that I'm expecting them to implement. I'd love for us to come up with it together um, because that is, that's ownership. Mm. Um, mm. Thanks so much for coming in and uh, helping us with... Oh, we should just say one last thing. Uh, we emailed the UK website people last week and asked them, can they let people from around the world sign up and be part of it? And they said yes. Yeah. Oh, and they've already changed it. <laughs> and oh, Did they change it already? Yeah. That's great. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so it's a passion for life... Oh, dot org dot uk or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just Google it. <laughs> Thanks so much, gentlemen, for coming in. You've been with us on the Pastor's Heart. My guest, Tom Melbourne from Central Villages Anglican Church in the Lower Blue Mountains, Elliot Temple from Christchurch St Ives, and Jody McNeil from Jamboree Anglican Church. This has been Dominic Steele, and we'll look forward to your company on the Pastor's Heart next Tuesday afternoon.